Happy Sunday afternoon. It's Carl from Studio in Car, and this is Rob's Defender 110 Adventure Edition. I love the Adventure Edition. I just love Land Rovers in general. Um, this car's got a wicked story. So there's three generations of use with this Defender. Rob, albeit a uh, uh, a young-looking grandfather, you know, allows his children and the grandchildren to use it to go on trips wherever they want to go. And there's really happy, pleasant signs of use inside the car as well, where things have been stuffed in for trips and everything like that. And I really, I really like the fact that it just gets used all the time for fun. The people that use the car have complained that it sounds like rubbish. So Rob came and saw us. Little did he know what we could do. So this video will be a slightly different one because I've got just over my right shoulder your left I don't know um, is the equipment that we've installed in this car it looks like a ton of kit when you look around the car there's not all that much to see because of the way we install in defenders these things are massive from the outside fitting them in places and in garages and through doors and things is a tricky thing they're quite large but when you get inside them and you try and fit stuff in there there's not a huge amount of space so we have to be quite cute with what we do you know in here we've got uh, two channel witness cameras, we've got a three way active front end, we've got active passive base, so not an active sub box in there, um, base controller, new head unit double din, full deadening, things like that. So it's it's had the works this one, we've had it for two weeks, we've been working on it for around 10 days. The majority of that is sound deadening when you do these things properly, you know, this has uh, doors, door cards, floors, ceiling, all the sides, all the rear arches, the front tubs, the under seat boxes, everywhere we can get our hands on that's going to help the way the stereo sounds and just generally quieten down the Land Rover as well. You know, as a singular upgrade, the sound deadening packages in these trucks are, you know, more than worth their weight. So let's take a look at the kit. I'm going to speak through each part, okay? So it'll be slightly longer than usual this one and maybe a little bit more boring for those of you that are just into Defenders and not into car audio, but I wanna give you the reasons as to why we use things. We don't just stumble upon a system. There isn't some higher being that offers us stuff for a great price, therefore we sell it into a car. It's a very long, tried and tested path to get the right system, you know, in, in any car. And a lot of the time, you know, when, when a client, you know, uh, approaches us with a certain idea, we'll discuss and we'll try and you know project our experience you know into that plan and tell them why certain things won't work you know and try and sort of help out so it's not a um it's not an arrogance thing it's not like you know our way or the highway it's a very sort of um long tried and tested thing so uh yeah let's talk through some of the kit then we'll have a look around the defender and i'll see if i can put some music on for you YouTube's on us at the minute because we've started using just genuine sort of music and tracks. I wish YouTube would just pay the artist and not pretend like we want to be paid or not act like we want to be paid from their music. Put it back into the music industry. Yeah, why not? Okay, let's go. Right, so hopefully you've got a decent view of this stack kit. Let's start with where we start when we're doing uh, an aftermarket system without an OEM head unit each time really, if we can, which is Sony's 5650. Okay, that's Sony's top double DIN unit, capacitive touchscreen, five volt pre-outs, which is what we're after, uh, and a, just a really clean sound. It's fast, i.e. it doesn't try and do a million things, so it starts up really quick. Sony, for me, um, they encapsulate that sort of simplicity in usability, which is so underrated, it's a, it's a huge part of it. Keeping the system or keeping the GUI fast and not complicated is a really simple way to enjoy the unit. Plus the fact it sounds wicked and we get no returns on 5650s. They're just completely solid or any Sony units really. Uh, next up, okay, so um, this is the VRC2. So this is the base controller that goes alongside the SR1.500. This is a linear base controller. So this is an upgrade over our active boxes. Active boxes tend to have a PQ based um, potentiometer for their sort of base controller. So you get, um, a, you know, how can I explain it? A, a, in the center of the range of the volume knob, it spikes up. So you tend to get not a lot before 
a huge spike in the middle and then everything after whereas this is very linear so this will just turn the sort of amplifier up in a linear fashion so the bass just steps up it's really nice like i say it's an upgrade over the active subwoofer box and there's another reason for that in this job as well um, so that explains the SR1.500 that is running or being controlled you know from a processing point of view via the AFM 12.14 so the new fours or amplifier this is a 12 channel amplifier with DSP output channels so we can get the subwoofer in time um, the this is running bridged so it's running a three-way front end bridged so there's a ton of power in there six times 140 watts at four ohms so each driver is getting a bunch of power and that's to it as mids and mid bass and we use that dsp amplifier or dsp amplifiers in these systems from a real estate point of view there's a lot of our defender lads that would go far further if they wanted to or, or if we advised that we can take up floor space in the back and things like that because that's what we need to do we need to raise the rear floor or raise the rear arch level to fit large format solid state sort of class a or class a b amplifiers in there and um, we need to pinch valuable space and as i said earlier the defender is quite cute with how it uses all of its interior anyway so we already struggle for space we need a full seven channel active system at least inside the passenger um seat box so uh yeah small format amplifier with as much power as we can possibly get this is a really clean sounding new generation class d amplifier it doesn't sound weak and edgy like old school class d amplifiers do you know or the majority of going clockwise this is the fascia pack if you're watching this you know where we buy it from put a loom in the fascia pack it's a 350 pound fascia pack it has no loom attached to it so just chuck a loom in there for us and then we don't have to order another one at last minute. Um, rear view camera. So we put the rear view camera in this on the um, section where the number plate light goes. There's a nice little section there that we can fit it to. You know, it is offset to the left. Most people that we deal with don't want it high up at the top. They want it sort of, you know, mid-level to the truck. And it works just, just fine. Anyway, so the reason, you know, again, like I say, we, we're running this completely actively. Uh, and we're running that to the Melee Legend three-way set. So the ML280.3, it's off-axis response and it's non-edgy, sort of richer nature to its sound. Works really well with the Defender. All of the Defender's flat lines and glass, all it wants to do is make things sound brash and harsh and quite attacking. Which is good for sort of mid-bass energy because it allows you that sort of headroom to control it. But for higher frequencies, upper mid-range and, you know, HF and tweeters and stuff like that, it's quite, it's a bit hardcore. So you really do have to, if you use an edgy tweeter like a, you know, like a focal tweeter or utopia tweeter or something like that, you end up doing loads of EQ to sort of sort that edginess out. These are really smooth up top and great off axis because they're sitting at 90 degrees to us. So we need to time that back in. Um, good tweeter for the Defender. And, and one of, you know, in my opinion, one of Car Audio's gems, this, it's a £250 tweeter, I think, um, and it plays against the big boys quite well, you know, and it's little as well, neo-magnet, so it's not six inches deep, you know, you're not going to have trouble getting it on a pillar. The ML700.3, so in the Melee line, this is the three-inch mid-range that runs with the ML280. We run this underneath the dash on an adapter plate running the OEM grill. So it spaces off about five or six mil. Um, we just sort of trim the outer edge of that so it looks OEM. You wouldn't know. We do a couple of little tricks to these to get them to play above the dash, and then we're away, and it all comes together. It's quite nice, actually. Um, and then the ML1650, which is probably just out of shot. Um, likely, <laughs> I picked that up as if it had the speakers in it. Obviously, there's no speakers in it. They're all in the truck. I nearly chucked it over my shoulder. Um, the ML650 shouldn't really need any introduction in car audio. It's been around for a long time. This is a stellar mid-bass. It will play low if you ask it to, but it will play fast. You know, it has a really hard-hitting mid-bass, and it will deal with a ton of power. Ignore its numbers. Just give it everything you can. Um, yeah, really good mid bass to firm up that bottom end. In here, it's probably running whoa, 65 to about 175, something like that, because they are mounted 
behind our sort of heels in the front of the box there underneath the seat. And that's the one point often when we're discussing systems with Defender owners where people may not want to modify that box. It's extremely worthwhile and from a residual point of view, I can't see anyone having an issue with there being an upgraded mid-base pre-fitted for them and them not having to do that job because the sound upgrade alone from that mid-bass is a massive step up. If you weren't a fan of, say, or a hardcore fan of, say, music or, um, or sound in general, you could probably do without the subwoofer, and with some specific tuning, you could just run the mid-basses, and they'll give you a really strong bass response in the truck. Often we have to turn one of them down because the enclosures, they carry different things, so there's different sizes, you know, the different basically en enclosure sizes for the mid bases. so they're on individual tuning, but then all the rest of the drivers are anyway. Yeah, so that's that three-way. Um, I mentioned it briefly earlier, we've got the Blackview DR770, uh, two-channel cameras in there, witness cams. Um, with LTE as well, so uh, 4G connection, which means he can be pretty much anywhere in the world and he can just turn it on and have a look at it, see what it's doing. He can get notifications live time if there's any sort of uh, bumps or anything on the truck or if there's any disturbances nearby the truck. So, yeah, really solid piece of kit. That That's that's their new one. What haven't we spoke about? Oh, the JL, the, the CP108, the biggest box on the rack. Okay. So we went passive in this for the reasons I explained with the bass controller and the amplifier. Also, as you'll see from um, it inside the truck, it's in a what we would call an interruption area, okay? It's between the rear seats in front of them. You can tread on it. It's a tough piece of kit. Um, the subwoofer is facing upwards, but the grill's rock solid, and the smaller JL grills get, the, more, the tougher they are, of course. It's just science, I suppose. Um, it's an 8-inch woofer. Ported, like I say, running passively, so there's a speaker cable going to it. You can disconnect that, pull it up, and it's out in seconds. Yeah, it needs to be easily removable. Plus, if they're sticking surfboards and skis and whatever else they might get up to, they might want to just take it out, you know, um, and then just rely on the mid base to give them a wicked performance, which it, you know, genuinely does. That's the kit, anyway. I thought I would run through the kit with you on this video. Like I say, you, you might not find it super interesting, but we can't capture every installation that we do in terms of shooting it, okay? There's four of us here. It, it, it's too much of a commitment to shoot while um, while working, you know? And we've put feelers out for social media manager and videographer a few times now, and we've had nothing back. So hit us up if you're that guy and you're willing to sort of train or come in here and learn things our way, whatever. Just give us a message. Anyway, yeah, so I thought I'd show you through the kit and uh, give you just a bit more of an understanding as to why we use some of the products that we do. You'll see differences, even people that have been through and had jobs done will see that the next job might be a slight shift or a few down the line, we might change something. And it's all about experience and different experiences with, with, with products. That's you know what we have to do. And it's been a long time. You know, we, we had one back in a couple of weeks ago uh, to sort out someone had bought the car off someone else and they ripped the DSP out and we had to have a look at it. But uh, it was a, a seven year old installation from us. Melee Legends, DSP, seven channel active, all in the underseat box. It's all the, the, the same formula because it works extremely well in the Defender. Let's have a look around it anyway. There we have it. It's a lovely, um, like a silver gray. It's almost the same color as my uh, Mark 7 Art. It's like a whitey, like a pearl, but like a yeah, you know, like a light grey at the same time. Let's go round the back, and we'll have a look at the sub box first, because there's not much need to go round the back again. Of course, you know every single piece of this has all been deadened as well, so um, you can see our reversing camera under there, just above the number plate, and that works well in that location. Um, we've got we've got all the kit here from. It, that was in the underseat box, of course. Now there's amplifiers and stuff in there now. Um, we've strapped down the bottle jack with a strap that's attached to the floor underneath the rear seats. And in the centre there, the subwoofer there in the middle, okay? Like I say, really quick to remove. These seats are down as an example to show you that everything still fits with that there. Um, and then you've still got foot space in front of the seat and you've got the whole sill, so... You know, if you want to put your leg up and rest your leg or whatever, you can do that. Or you can just put your foot on the sub box. Like I say, it's a tough cookie, that thing. 
So up front, as I said, we've got our three under the dash there. You can just see, just spaced off the bottom of the dash. It looks lovely, and OEM. We've got our mid base in the front of the seat there. This is all sound deadened, so this is all nice and dead. And that plays. You can hear the energy that that's going to create, you know, from simple power, really. The ML280 is on the dash top there. Some slight modifications to get that to work, but that sits in there really well. And then we have the 5650 in the centre console. Typically, we leave the plastic on. It's too satisfying for us to take it off, and that's a, uh, the client can do that, you know. The VCR controller is in this console here, just on this lip. I'm going to leave that how it is because uh, it's all set up and good to go. And then we've got the Blackview camera up top there. It's disconnected at the moment. We always disconnect them when we fit them. Last thing we need is someone seeing us dancing around a workshop. So, uh, yeah, and that's pretty much everything that you can see inside the Defender. I've spoken to you about the kit, I've told you about the sound deadening as a standalone feature, let alone as part of a stereo. Such a wicked thing. I love it when these things come through, and I love it when they come through from stock. So bone stock, Alpine radio, four-inch speakers everywhere. No deadening whatsoever. The upgrade is it's just it's huge. Great value. All right, if you want to know what something like this costs or you have a Defender and you're seeing ours um, and you want to come through, then just give me a shout. Everything is in the description below or it's info at studioincar.co.uk. Real simple email address. Email is our preferred form of sort of contact. On the phone, we can't really give any quotations or anything like that because these things are also wildly different. Typically, you'll email with as much detail as possible. I can get something loose back to you, but I'll usually ask you to come in. We'll have a chat, we'll meet up, and we'll discuss what you want rather than what we want to give you. All right. Have a good rest of your weekend, guys. I'm Carl. This is Studio In Car, and this is Rob's 110. Thanks for bringing it through, mate.